Wow. All right. With those happy thoughts in mind, <laughs> we'll begin. We'll be. We'll begin class. Um, we were covering uh, the design document uh, that you'll prepare as as part of uh, your project. Um, the idea is again that anything that you do, you're better off if you take some time to plan it and then do it, as opposed to just jumping in and trying to do it. Um, and therefore, we go through the process of designing our website. And designing the website is is um, partly consists of deciding like what font to use, what colors to use, and so on, but not exclusively. A big part of the design is taking what may be vague thoughts in your mind or the mind of your, your client and actually putting them down on paper and documenting them. And let's make sure we understand why we do that. We do that for one thing because vague ideas floating around your head are one thing, by being forced to sit down and write them, it sort of makes sure that they gel and make sure that you really have thought them through and you really have a solid plan. You know, um, I may have my schedule for today in my mind of the stuff that I want to do. You know, yeah, I know I got to run some errands and I have class and I want to make sure I do this, that, and the other. But if that's floating around in my head, you're much more likely to miss something than if you sit down and document it. If I sit down and write, well, okay, from 9 to 11, I have my class. From uh, 11 to 1, I'm going to grade. From 1 to 3, I have another class. From 3 to 5, I'm going to run errands. From then, I'm going to eat dinner, and then I'm going to do my evening stuff. All right? So to have something documented sort of forces you to make sure that it gels and that, that you've thought everything through. and there aren't gaps and there aren't things that you forgot uh, of. The other reason, uh, you know, so that's one reason for documenting it, is to, to sort of take what might be vague ideas in your mind and actually document them, putting them on paper, and hopefully that will ensure that you've really thought them through. The other thing is to communicate. Remember, when you're doing a project, very rarely are you doing a project for yourself. Usually you're doing a project for an organization, all right? Um, you might be part of the organization, so you might be in their IT department, or you might be like a consultant that comes in to do their website. That's also very common, you know. Um, in which case, you need to communicate to who you're building the site for. This is what my plans are. Because remember, you don't want to get to the end of the line, deliver your website, and have them say, this is horrible. It's better for them to say, this is horrible, to your plan. Because then that, oh, you always have a chance to go back and revise it. And to, uh, uh, you know, and, and to make the changes before you've actually gone and launched it. Remember, the further along a project you go, the more expensive it gets to correct. Um, the other thing is you could be working, depending on the size of the project, you could be working with other developers. All right? Um, and you want to make sure everyone's on the same page and everyone understands what the site is going to be about and, and that there's good communication among everyone on the team that's working together. All right, so that's why we even document this to begin with. So um, I want you, I, you know, I want to practice this by having us document our projects in this class. Um, we've gone over so far three stages of the development process: strategy, scope, structure. Strategy being goals and personas. We define who's going to be visiting our site, who we think is going to be visiting our site. We create profiles for them. We write little biographies of them. We write what their goals are. And we define goals for us as being the entity that's making the site. So we talked about that. That should be documented along with a paragraph, in our case, a paragraph explaining the purpose of the site. The scope is also known as the requirements. And the requirements tie very closely to the goals. You can achieve just about any goal a whole bunch of different ways. The requirements are your plan for achieving your goals. So your goals, um, you know, my goal might be to be rich. 
right? So that might be how, that might be what my, what my goal is. I could take many paths to get there, right? I could, well, maybe not at this age, but I could uh, practice and uh, try to become a, a professional athlete. It's probably late for me to try that route, all right? But when I was younger, I could have tried that. Um, I could figure out uh, an academic path that maybe I'm going to go to school and study such and such, and that will be my path to be rich. Maybe my path to be rich is to, uh, you know, um, find and marry a rich widow. Maybe that's my path. Uh, maybe my path is to play the lottery. All right. All these are ways that I could achieve my goal. Am I going to do all of them? No. All right. You're not going to do all the possible things that you could do to achieve your goal. You're going to pick the ones that you think are best for you to achieve your goal. Like, for example, you know, in my case, you know, uh, if, if I was making this decision, uh, I would say, well, marrying someone just for their money is probably immoral, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, playing the lottery, the odds are stacked against you, so I'm not going to do that. Professional athlete, I don't have the talent for that, so I'm probably not going to do that. And so I would figure out my best shot at, you know, after eliminating the other things. It's similar in a website. There's a lot of ways that you can achieve any goal. If you think of creating a website for a band, um, one of the things you might want to do is expose the band, gain new fans for the band. Now, there's a lot of ways that you could do that. You could put free downloads on your site. You could put concert footage on your site. You could uh, give away free tickets to the band's appearance. Do you do all those? No. You pick the one that you think is best. You think the one that meets your goals and the goals of your users. So maybe not putting down your entire catalog to download, but putting a free song to download, or putting samples of a song, or putting short video clips, or something like that. You figure what would best showcase your particular band does your band have a strong visual aspect? Maybe a video would be better than an audio file. All right? So you come up with the steps, the requirements, the stuff on your site that will help you accomplish the goals. So your goals and the goals of all your different personas. That's what the requirements are. It's a list of stuff that's going to be on the site that's going to help you achieve the goals of you and the goals of the personas. The structure is how your site is going to be laid out in terms of how you're going to break it down into different pages. And you're going to have a structure chart. And you're going to talk a little bit about why you picked that design, why you did not go with some other route. We gave the example last time of a sporting goods store where we could divide our uh, content up a million different ways. Right? Well, we can't do a million different ways, but we're going to pick the one that makes most sense to not just us, but especially to our visitors. You know, the visitors of the site in achieving their goals, what, uh, what is the way that would probably make most sense to them? And that's the route that we're going to take. All right, those are the first three that we went over so far. All of these are in, the word, are in a Word document. You might, use a ch uh, you might use some drawing program to create this. Um, I would prefer one Word document, um, but I'm not going to sweat it if, if you prepare more than one. I would ask that you save it in a standard format. By that, I mean I shouldn't have to download any weird software to display it. All right. So a PDF would be great, because I can view a PDF anywhere. A Word document would be great. All right. So those two would be sort of my preferred options. Now, the fourth step is also in the, um, in, in, in the Word document, or I'm saying Word document, it's in the document, and it's called skeleton. And skeletons are also called wireframes. I think they picked all these so that they start with S, makes it easy to remember. And it really did, it really does help me to remember like when I'm lecturing without notes, to remember, okay, what's the next one? I know it starts with an S, all right? A skeleton or wireframe is sort of a very high level drawing of what a web page is. 
So for example, this might be a skeleton or wireframe. Then I'm going to have my corporate logo up here. I'm going to have a banner up here. And this is sort of my header section. I'm going to have my navigation over here. I'm going to have the content area here. And then finally, I'm going to have a footer over here. So, header, nav, a content section, and a footer. That might be a wireframe. All right? Now, you're not going to have one wireframe per, per, per page. You're going to have one wireframe for your site, or maybe two wireframes for your site. Sometimes your home page is a little different than the rest of the pages of your site. So maybe you have a different wireframe for that. Um, but you don't need a different wireframe for each page. In fact, you don't want a different wireframe for each page. Because you want a very consistent layout. If we look at different websites, you know, let's pick a, a website, even a large website like Amazon. Notice, we have a header up here. Our home page sort of has, let's draw sort of a wireframe for this. I'm going to sketch it, and then, then I'll show it to you. If I was going to draw the wireframe for this, I would draw it something like this. We have sort of our features on the top. That's this bar up here that shows doing interesting things on Amazon Explore. We then have our header, which has our logo, the search button. Underneath that, we have our nav. Then we have a few blocks of different products and departments. Then finally, at the very bottom of the page, we have our footer. It has a bunch of stuff. So that, I would say, is an adequate wireframe for this page. Now, if we get on a specific page for Amazon, this would be Amazon's home page, let's say. Let's go and do, uh, let's go and actually find a product on Amazon. So I'm going to do a search for HTML. I'll just pick this book. All right. The wireframe for this page I would draw it to look like this. We still have on the top of the page the featured products. We then have our header or banner that includes our search and our logo. We have our nav. We have a picture of the product. 
we have product info, we have bought together, also bought, sponsored, reviews, we'll go on another sheet of paper, some details, customer reviews, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, <laughs> and then a footer. Now, if we went on every single page on this site, every single product, this is the layout that it has. So I would say this would be a good wireframe for Amazon's product page. So Amazon, being a very large site, is going to have maybe, not every page is going to look exactly the same, but every page is going to have some things in common. For example, what does this page have in common with the home page? Well, they both have the features, the top part of the page looks the same. The bottom of the page looks the same. The stuff in between the top and bottom, well, that's a little bit different. All right? So, for a large site, you might have several wireframes, each section. Um, you know, if you went and visited uh, LC's website, the home page would look one way. Uh, probably most other pages have a very common look, though. All right? They have a lot of stuff in common. So, the bottom line is, for a site like we're creating, you might have one, you might have two wireframes. If you have more than two wireframes, if you think you need more than two wireframes, talk to me about it, because maybe you don't. All right? And again, I wouldn't want you to do more work than, than you need to. And uh, if you think you have more than two wireframes, then maybe there's something about wireframes that we need to go over in more detail. Because for a site as small as ours that we're developing, uh, you probably only need one or two. All right? So, that's a wireframe. Just a sketch of the site, sort of on a high level, saying what the main sections of each site is, uh, what the main section of each page is going to have. And you'll have, again, you will have, uh, you could potentially have different ones for different kinds of pages, but you may only have one or two of them for your whole site if it's smaller. A larger site might have four, five, six, you know, if it's really big. Amazon, I'll bet if we went through and sketched, we probably would find, um, you know, a half dozen, probably under 10 different wireframes. But Amazon is a gigantic site, right? So we would expect uh, there to be more stuff on a site like that as compared to the site that we're going to create. All right. So that is the fourth section, the wireframe or skeletons. The last part of your design is a prototype. This is going to be in a document. Word or PDF. The prototype is going to be actual HTML and CSS files, plus images, etc. What's another word for prototype? Mock-up, that's good. What's that? Demo, that's good. Uh, the one I would use uh, would be model, all right? But all of those are the same things. You know, you make prototypes in a lot of different uh, um, 
industries, not just web development. You know, if they make a, if they're going to make a, a new car, for example, they'll make a prototype of it. They won't just start cranking out millions of them. You know, they'll make a prototype of what the car is going to look like and, and so on. Um, if they are, um, you know, if you're, if you're designing a new sort of ski jacket, right, you might make a prototype of what it's going to look like. Now, what is true about a mock-up or a demo or a prototype? How does a prototype compare to the final product? It's like experimental, all right? That's that's a real good point. Exactly, it's a chance to get feedback from whoever. Uh, it could be for the people you're making the site for. You could create a a a. Uh, a, a a, uh, what do they call those, a focus group and bring, bring potential users in and have them play around with the site and give their feedback of what works. You could even observe them even better uh, than getting feedback or, or I, I hesitate to say even better, but, but in addition to uh, getting feedback from them, you can observe how they use the site. Are they confused by a link or do they know exactly what your navigation means? All right. Um, you said it's sort of experimental. Uh, when you think of an experiment, uh, an experiment could work or could not work, right? If an experiment worked every time, then it's not an experiment, right? <laughs> you know. So the idea here is that you're still at the point of the process where you can change what you're working on, all right? So a prototype is not meant to be complete, all right? prototype is not meant to be complete. It's meant to be complete enough so that you can get feedback. All right? That's a key characteristic of that. So what does that mean? Well, maybe you don't have the finished images that you're going to use. Maybe you're going, maybe you're going to go around, if you're doing, let's say, a website for a band, maybe you're going to take pictures of them and you have a photo session uh, scheduled for two weeks from now. But you want to show the band what the site's going to look like. Well, you might substitute pictures of other bands or other musicians just to give them a sense of what it's going to look like. All right? So that would be one thing that, would, uh, that, that you'd do. You might have, not have completed text. So you might have just a rough draft of your text, or you might, in some cases, use Greek text on it. What should be complete, though? Because a prototype also isn't just the first thing that you throw together, right? A prototype is somewhat finished. So what should be finished? Well, I would think you'd want your color scheme, the fonts, the basic layout of the pages, the navigation. I think you would want those pretty well set. Another thing about a prototype is you might not have all your pages. So you might have out of eight pages, you might have three pages completed, all right? and. Uh, Yeah, th th this is distracting. I wish they would. I wish. I wish they would turn off that <laughs> that camera. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll... Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, yeah, a prototype should be complete enough to demonstrate the important aspects of it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it, should be, it should be complete enough to show the important aspects of the site or whatever it is you're creating a prototype for, but not so complete that you spend a crazy amount of time on it. All right? One thing that's really good, and I didn't make a requirement, but you could always do it, is to have different prototypes. And we know how easy it is to make your page look different simply by changing CSS. All right? So one thing that you could do, uh, again, it's not a requirement for the assignment, but a good thing to do in, in, in actual projects, and I should make this a requirement for the assignment, is to do a couple versions of it. So have the exact same HTML pages, but just have a different CSS file. Because, again, um, the one thing that is definitely a human nature is that it's very hard for, for people to get a blank slate and for them to figure out what something should look like. 
It's very easy for people to look at something and critique and say what they like and don't like about it. I'm not, and I'm not saying this like in terms like it's easy for people to complain about something. That's not what I mean at all. All right. What I mean is it's easy for people to look at something tangible and concrete and say, that should be bigger, that should be smaller. Um, could you rearrange these things? Uh, the shade of red that you're using is too bright. You know, it's easy to make those kinds of feedback. It's harder to give someone a blank sheet of paper and say, yep, there, draw your website. You know, that's hard for a lot of people to do. All right. Uh, one thing that's good about giving people multiple prototypes is you give them a choice then. They can say, I like this one over that one. Or they can mix and match. It's like, well, I like the font you used on this one, but the color scheme you used on that one. All right. So you can show a couple different options and, and do that. All right. On the same token, you put this up sort of as a straw man because you want feedback. I was going to say you want criticism, but I don't mean criticism like in a negative way. You want feedback. All right. Um, if people are like, just look at your prototype and say, yep, that's good, you really got to wonder, um, did they really think about it? Right? Because, gee, your rough draft about anything isn't going to be perfect. So um, it's good. You, you put up something with the intent of getting it criticized and, and critiqued. Maybe critiqued is better than criticized. Um, in a way, you have to have a little bit of a thick skin when you do this. Right? Because when you show something, you know, your, your human nature is that when you show something, show someone something that you made, if they criticize it, you know, it's easy sometimes to take it personally. Well, keep in mind that's the purpose of a prototype. It's better that they criticize a prototype than to criticize the end product. Right? They criticize your prototype, hey, you're learning what they really want by their critique of your prototype. Um, if they criticize your finished product, then you missed the boat somewhere. All right? So therefore, you want the feedback on the prototype. And if people criticize it, don't take it personally. They're criticizing something that you made. They're not criticizing you. All right? And again, the whole thought of creating a prototype is for that purpose. Any questions about the prototype? Yes? So when I was doing Yeah, uh, again, uh, some, a lot of that has to do with the, with the, uh, with the uh, particular users that you're work, working with. Um, it's a balancing act between spending enough time to get it in a finished enough state where they like it and not spending too much time where you're, you're polishing it and, and, and so on. In a case like that, if a case where you're working with people that don't really have the imagination to say that this is Greek text, you know, well, what's that? Gee, I don't want words like this on my website, you know. Um, you have to sort of play to the audience. And uh, in that case, you know, you might, make, you might make fewer pages but more complete. So it's a balancing act between how much time you spend on it um, and... Uh, how complete you make it, because you don't want to spend too much time on it, but you don't want to spend too little time on it. I'll give you a great example. Uh, I worked in the um, auto rental industry years ago, and we did some, uh, you know, I, I showed uh, someone like, I showed someone in our fleet department uh, a prototype of a report. And, you know, I don't know how much cars cost, you know, I was just making numbers up. So I just put numbers in. I probably, the cost of everyone was probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, something like that. And when I showed the person the report, that's all they could focus on. It wasn't the layout of the report, which is what I wanted them to focus on. It wasn't the way that it was sorted. It wasn't the subtotals. It wasn't the, the different piece of information we showed. All they could focus on is like, well, a 1989 Chrysler wouldn't cost that much. It's like, yeah, I know that. I made that number up, all right? Yeah, yeah you know, and, and it's hard to get that through people's, people's minds because, again, they don't really understand the process, which is okay. That's what we're here for. But in a case like that, yeah, you might, my suggestion, and if you're dealing with a perfectionist like that, might be to show them fewer pages but more complete pages. 
Whereas if you were someone that sort of got prototyping, maybe you show more pages that are a little less complete. Other questions? I thought I saw a hand up about prototypes. Were there other questions? Okay, here's what we're going to do for the next, well, I promised I would talk about the portfolio. All right, I'm gonna, so this is, let's keep clear what these assignments are. This is talking about the design for your project. Your portfolio is a different assignment. All right, your portfolio, which the first version of is due pretty soon, I think, is simply to take and collect all of your assignments and create a web page that contains links to all of your assignments. Yes. Now you might have to do some tweaking depending on how you named your assignments and things like that. You might put each assignment in its own folder. To create a portfolio, it really shouldn't take a lot of work because you've already done the assignments. You're just essentially going to create a page that has um, uh, links to all of them and maybe some text that, that talks about them. So let's look at the portfolio assignment. Portfolio is a collection of your work. Um, it's, portfolios are used in a lot of creative fields, right? If you were a photographer, you'd have samples of your work if you're going for a photography job. Um, if you were uh, a, a, an actor, you might have your portfolio might look different. It might include um, uh, photos of you in different roles or, or you know, basic headshots. It might include clips of performances that you did. Um, graphic designers and web developers oftentimes will have portfolios of it all showing samples of their work. All right? And one of the reasons that you do this is to demonstrate to prospective employees. So a lot of people will put their portfolio online. Later on in the course, we'll talk about how you make an actual website and put these things online. So you create a portfolio in this class. You should keep a copy of your assignments. If you did not do that, you can always re-download them from Canvas. And I can show you how to do that if you have any questions. All right, for the first draft, you will do this. The first turn in, which is October 18th, I think. So a couple weeks from today. I would suggest finding some examples. Create a page called portfolio.html. Add some content about yourself, an explanation about the, what the page is. Yes, I do. Uh, create an external style sheet. Create a link to each of the uh, labs, one through six. If an assignment had more than one page, you only need to link to one of the pages. Because if you had an assignment that has more than one page, um, there probably would be, you know, your pages would probably be linked anyhow inside of it. Um, include some notes about each page. The notes might describe what you learned in the assignment, what you enjoyed, or anything relevant. So here's how I'm seeing it in my mind. All right. You already have all your pages out there. I would create a folder for each assignment. that contains all these pages. I create a portfolio HTML that looks like this. A paragraph about you. I was going to say about me, but I don't want you writing a paragraph about me. I want a paragraph of you writing about you, all right? But I hope you all understand that. I then would have a link to each lab. Lab one. Um, this was first page I made. I was surprised how easy it was. 
please don't use the exact words that I'm having here, all right? Um, and then I would have a link to it that would go to a link to this folder's lab one. I would then, the one slight alteration you make here is you should put, and put it in the same place in each page, put it maybe at the very top of the page, a link back to the portfolio. Now, the link to that would be something like this. If I called my portfolio lab one folder, if I call my por uh, lab one folder lab one, I would say lab one and then whatever my page name was. So this would be linked from, from portfolio to lab one. The link from lab one to the portfolio would be dot dot slash portfolio. Because this is going to be in a directory above lab one, lab two. So create a folder for the portfolio, put your portfolio, HTML, and any other files, have subfolders for each of the labs. This is how you'd create a link to the individual lab. This is how you'd create a link from the lab up to the portfolio. So that's what I would envision. So if you've done the assignments, you have most of it done, need to just add a link to the portfolio page on each of your assignments, and you just need to uh, create one page, style it with CSS, and link to all those. All right, so really you're just collecting stuff. The first version of this is due on October 18th. Your design then is due, I think, a couple weeks after that. It's due November 8th, so two or three weeks. I'm not sure what that would be. It'd probably be three weeks after that. Can you believe how far along we're on the semester? Uh, we are approaching the halfway point. We're not too far along from that. It, I still have to like think about like what day of the week it is and what classes I have and what rooms they're in and all that. And we're almost halfway through the semester. Each semester flies by quicker than the one before. All right, so that's your portfolio. All right, here's what we're going to do for the next, um, I don't know, two, three classes, maybe? I don't know. We're going to talk about turning your wireframes into a prototype, all right? Or turning your wireframes into a prototype and then from a prototype into a finished website. So we're going to tackle the one thing that we've sort of avoided so far and that is layout of your web pages. So far, most of our web pages, uh, we started introducing style to the web pages, so your pages look a little different at least. They're, they have color to them, they have different fonts, and so on. But still, for the most part, your, web, your pages look like this. Heading, paragraph. Heading, list, heading, paragraph. Just sort of stuff stacked on top of each other. That's a basic, because that's all we've talked about. We haven't talked about really, we've talked maybe a little bit more than that, but that's basically what we talked about. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make, uh, we're going to take a wireframe and make an HTML page that achieves the desired layout that we want. We're actually going to take the same sort of content and style it a bunch of different ways to get a different layout. All right? Someone pick a topic. Someone pick a topic I know something about. <laughs> computers. That's boring. We always talk about computers. Sorry. Science fiction. Science fiction. What? Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay. We'll go, with, we'll go with Star Wars, because that's a little more specialized than science fiction. Do people know Star Wars in here in case I make mistakes? OK, good, good. Because I don't want to say that like Frodo was you know, uh, Gandalf's son or something, if, if that's not the case. All right? So we're going to do a page about Star Wars. All right? And let's talk about what pages we're going to have. Let's draw our 
Let, let's let's go. Let's actually go, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll fake the the goals and the requirements. All right. We'll assume that we've done that, and we'll pick up with the structure. So we're going to have a home page. Here's what I'm going to do. And again, if this is your if this is your project, you do what you want. But I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the way that I would think of it. All right. I'm going to do a page for the original. So that would be episodes four through six, correct? All right. The prequels. That would be episodes one through three. And then finally, um, the sequels, I guess. I don't know. Episodes seven through nine. Then I'm going to have other stuff. All right. So that's how my site's going to be. I didn't intend to have a fourth page, um, so that's why that one is so skinny. All right. So let's talk about, let's draw, so that, that's my structure. Well, my, here's what my wireframe's going to look like for the first version. I'm going to have a header. I'm going to have navigation. That's going to have the home page, original, prequels, sequels, other. I'm going to have the content area. Then I'm going to have a footer. All right. Now, what part of this page is going to be in com is going to be in common for all of my pages? What sections? Yes. The header and the navigation. The header and the navigation. And, and probably the footer. All right. So the content area is going to be the only thing that's different. Ooh, I like that, right? Because here's what I'm going to do. Here's going to be my strategy. I'm going to take and I'm going to make a template, all right, that's going to have everything that all my pages have in common. Then it's going to have a place to put the thing that is distinct for each of the pages. So I'm going to create an HTML document that has a header, that has a nav, that has a section, and that has a footer. I'm going to do my best to make sure I get those three sections that are common on every page perfect. All right? So I'm going to try to get the header exactly the way I want it to. I'm going to try to get the navigation exactly the way I want it to and the footer exactly the way I want it to. When I say that, I mean as far as content goes. I'm going to develop the HTML for these things and I want that to be perfect and complete. Why? Because after I get my template right, I'm going to clone it. Pardon the pun with Star Wars. All right. So I'm going to create five copies of this page. Home, original, prequels, sequels, other. All right? So five pages are going to be copies. Why do I want to make sure I have the common content perfect? Because after I've cloned them, if I decided I missed something, I have to go back and add it to every page. So it's kind of like writing you know, a, a letter that you're going to send to several different people, right? You want, you want the stuff that's going to be in common perfect because you don't want to have to go back and revise five or six copies of it. You want to revise it while you're still working on the template. The CSS, guess what? I'm not going to worry about that being perfect 
because, why? Because the CSS is all going to be in one file. I want to minimize the changes I have to make. That's what my goal is going to be here. So that's why I want the common HTML to be perfect, but I'm not terribly worried about the CSS because the CSS is going to be in one file. And therefore, if I decide to change it, I can change it in one place. All right? So that's the process that we're going to go through. I'm going to make an HTML file and a CSS file for a template. When I feel comfortable that that HTML file is exactly the way I want it to be, I'm then going to clone that five times, one for each page. I'll do each specific page then, and then I'll tweak the CSS to get it exactly the way I want. So I can tweak the CSS after I've cloned the pages, and it's not any more work. All right? This way, it should be clear that making five pages doesn't take five times as long as making one page. It takes longer, but not five times as long, right? Because the common areas are already going to be done. I just need to fill in this area for each specific page. All right. Unfortunately, we are out of time. I would love to start this today. We will start this instead on Monday. All right. Uh, have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday.